Owning a franchise of a major restaurant chain seems to be synonymous with guaranteed success. If that chain is known worldwide, with coverage across the national territory, even better. And no name is a bigger reference in the industry than McDonald's, being known for generations and beloved by adults and children. It's not uncommon to see images like these in a shopping mall. This is definitely a good deal for McDonald's. But is it really a good deal for the franchisee? The initial investment to join the ranks of the Golden Arches is $500,000, but the brand brings comfort and security to the investor. After all, McDonald's seems stronger than ever, with its stocks currently at their highest value in the company's history, growing consistently. But what may be a safe investment on paper turns out to be something else in practice. Behind the scenes of the fast food empire, a climate of strained relationships has motivated a sort of exodus of franchisees in recent years. Many of those who invested a lot of time and money in an attempt to profit from the clown's franchise found themselves immersed in enormous financial pressures, high operating costs, and suffocating sales targets. But if the golden arches of McDonald's have been synonymous with success and prosperity for decades, why have so many franchisees been abandoning this partnership? And if opening a McDonald's franchise may not be a good business, what explains the company's unwavering growth even in recent years? To join this club, a person has to be willing because being a McDonald's partner is definitely not an easy path. The brand is highly selective when it comes to approving new franchisees. The first restriction comes in the location. Here in the USA, for example, the chain does not allow the opening of restaurants in cities with fewer than 100,000 inhabitants. With this in mind, aspiring franchisees need to demonstrate interest in the franchise by contacting the company directly. The first step is to submit your resume, showing management skills, and also answer a questionnaire, all prerequisites to securing a face-to-face -face interview with a representative, which will be followed by a financial analysis of the candidate. If approved through these stages, the potential franchisee will still have to personally oversee the operation of McDonald's restaurants and undergo a final profile analysis. If you survive all of this, the franchisee enters the training phase, where there will be a nine-month immersion to learn everything possible about managing a McDonald's restaurant. This very strict selection process also comes with an extra layer of exclusivity. The initial investment to open a McDonald's franchise ranges from $500,000 to $1 million, an amount that may discourage many aspiring franchisees. Furthermore, once the franchise proposal is accepted, McDonald's actively participates in every decision of the franchise, from choosing the exact location of the new restaurant to preparing the new business and marketing strategies. Once the new franchise is opened, the franchisee starts paying monthly fees, such as the royalty fee, which costs 4% of the monthly unit turnover, and the advertising fee, which also costs 4% or more, in addition to bearing expenses related to the brand's strategies, renovation costs, and equipment. One of the many obligations for someone becoming a franchisee is that this person must have a very hands-on management of the unit, and with this policy, the expectation is to ensure the quality of services and products that are supposed to exist. Thus, the owner assumes more of a role as a gourmet manager than a proper owner. With regular inspections, franchisees usually receive constant visits and inspections in the restaurants, all to ensure that the brand's expectations and requirements are always met, and that every Big Mac is the same even if it's never quite the same as in the advertising. Despite so many impositions, 93% of the 38,000 McDonald's locations worldwide are operated by franchisees. According to Joe Erlinger, president of McDonald's USA, franchisees are the main ingredient in the success of the brand. But it's not just about impositions and bureaucracy for a franchisee. A positive aspect is that they have direct access to a wide range of marketing and management strategies, to the brand's experience and know-how, and they also have the right to consultations with experts from various areas of the company. All of this to ensure the maximum performance of McDonald's restaurants. And, of course, the most important point of all is being able to use the McDonald's brand, which is already recognized and beloved by the public. But for many franchisees, the fast food chain has been adopting increasingly abusive practices. Recently, McDonald's implemented a complete rebranding of the brand's look and demanded renovations in the restaurants to align with the new visual identity, in addition to requiring the adoption of new machines, such as self-service kiosks. 
One of the main problems with this type of requirement is that the chain basically does not provide financial support for these changes, which end up being quite expensive for the franchisee. But since the McDonald's franchise is still considered one of the most reliable to invest in, and is it really possible to make a profit as a franchisee of the Golden Arches? McDonald's is present on every continent in the world, except Antarctica, of course. As one of the largest fast food chains, with so many locations worldwide, it is expected that the revenue from a McDonald's franchise involves million-dollar figures. And that's exactly right. According to Business Insider, in 2019, the average annual revenue of a McDonald's unit is around $2.7 million in the United States. Therefore, being a McDonald's franchisee can pose challenges, but it also offers considerable opportunities for success, as long as you are willing to face the demands and commitments that come with this partnership. But those who think this means that the franchisee's profit is proportional to that amount are mistaken. In reality, it's estimated that this number corresponds to only 6% of the annual revenue, meaning a McDonald's franchisee will have a profit of about $150,000 per year. To be honest, this number isn't very impressive, especially considering the multi-million dollar initial investment and the weight of the McDonald's brand. Moreover, this amount is not very different from the salaries of educated professionals in the United States. For comparison, in a survey conducted by the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2022, it was found that a dentist earned an average of $180,000 per year and a lawyer $160,000. Even though a degree costs a lot here, it doesn't come close to the initial investment required to open a McDonald's franchise. This happens because the restaurant's revenue suffers serious blows from a long list of operating costs, royalties, fees, and taxes, which end up falling on the franchisee's shoulders. Furthermore, over 10% of the revenue is allocated to rent payments for the location, which often belongs to McDonald's itself. With a model where it profits from every angle, McDonald's is the big winner in this game. The brand thrives on franchises, and that's where the lion's share of the pie really comes from. That's exactly why it's in McDonald's' interest to attract as many franchisees as possible. While its franchisees are concerned with restaurant operations, the company makes billions of dollars in profits. From 2018 to 2020, the company's average annual profit was $2.4 billion, with the majority of the revenue coming from franchise restaurants. And this is precisely the key point. McDonald's doesn't make money by selling hamburgers but by exploiting its franchise system. Harry Joseph Sonneborn, Ray Kroc's right-hand man during McDonald's first decade as a franchise, even said, technically, we're not in the food business. We're in the real estate business. The only reason we sell 15-cent hamburgers is that they are the greatest source of revenue with which our tenants pay us rent. This strategy or business model was an invention of Sonneborn himself. In the early 1960s, when Ray Kroc bought the company from the true founders, the McDonald brothers, Harry Sonneborn had an idea to maximize the company's profits, to buy the land where franchisees could operate. Still used by McDonald's to this day, this strategy makes the company not only the franchiser but also the tenant of the lots where the restaurants are opened, with the tenants being the franchisees themselves. This works very well for the brand since acting as a real estate service for franchises is much more profitable than operating its own restaurants. The proof of this is that the company manages to retain over 80% of the revenue from franchisees, while in units operated by the giant itself, this percentage hovers around only 15%. While McDonald's simply observes and waits for the money to come in, many franchisees aren't very satisfied with this kind of one-sided partnership. The question is, are the franchisees playing the role of the real clowns in the midst of this story? In recent years, the relationship between franchisees and the company has not been the same. After so much time and money invested to have the right to operate a McDonald's unit, the frustration of franchisees in the face of the apparent indifference of the brand to its partners was inevitable. Many of these people dreamed of entrepreneurship but didn't realize that having a franchise like this was far from being real entrepreneurship, it was more like paying to be an employee of a large fast food chain. Because the only apparent freedom given to managers is which of the two uniforms they could wear. In 2018, for instance, 
The brand demanded a complete remodeling of the interior of the restaurants, including the new self-service kiosks, as part of a rebranding effort. It's no secret that renovations are expensive, so imagine the franchisee's reaction when they found out they would need to replace all the furniture and the interior of their units. McDonald's offered to cover 55% of the renovation costs, it's true, but even so, restaurant owners continued to be less than thrilled about it. In the United States, this led to the creation of the first franchisee association for the brand, the National Owners Association, or NOA, in an attempt to give more power to franchisees in relation to the company's decisions. At the end of 2020, when McDonald's decided to impose a new fee on its already saturated franchisees, the association took action, and franchisees decided to take legal action against the network. But discontent with the McDonald's franchise system has also led to another effect, franchisees giving up. In a franchisee satisfaction survey regarding the partnership, it was recorded that, on a scale of 1 to 5, McDonald's received an average rating of 1.19, a very poor result. As a result, many franchisees are simply selling their locations at record numbers. In 2021, more than 1,700 restaurants in the network were sold in the United States, or about 13% of the stores there. Burger King, one of its major competitors, had a percentage of franchises sold of only 6%. This scenario highlights the complexities and challenges faced by McDonald's franchisees, despite the appeal of the globally recognized brand. Striking a balance between the demands of the franchise and the profit expectations of franchisees is an ongoing challenge and, as we can see, has generated controversies and significant changes in the dynamics between the parent company and its business partners. In the past two years, more than 1,400 McDonald's stores had already changed ownership, in addition to the 450 stores that closed, resulting in nearly 30% of stores being sold or closed in just three years. Even though he was satisfied with what he had earned during his life, Michael Anton sold his franchise after 32 years. In an interview, he said, I wasn't completely comfortable with the company's direction and I was exhausted and didn't like what was happening. It was a completely different business than it had been. According to some franchisees, the reasons for this involved changes in McDonald's own business, imposing abusive decisions and fees, and some unpopular policies among franchisees, such as the adoption of surprise inspections in stores. Furthermore, there are arguments that claim that the profitability of McDonald's franchises is not exactly the best option in the market today as the actual profits for a franchisee are low in relation to the initial investment proportion. Estimates indicate that it can take six to nine years for a franchisee to recover the initial investment. At this point, it's important to remember that managing a franchise of the brand requires constant work from the franchisee. In other words, it can take up to nine years of hard work, obeying the company's orders, just to recover the multi-million dollar initial investment. Therefore, any aspiring franchisee needs to carefully analyze the numbers and possibilities. After all, with the initial investment amount, is it not possible to look for an equally profitable investment without having to work or swallow orders from a company in the process? Finally, if the foundation of McDonald's business model is precisely the franchise model, and the relationships between the company and the franchisees are strained, why does McDonald's still perform so well in the financial market? The answer is simple. The enormous profits achieved by the brand, even at the expense of franchisees, make McDonald's shares a very attractive option. After all, who wouldn't want to invest in a company that constantly earns billions? So, for investors, McDonald's can be an extremely lucrative opportunity. The question is, can the same be said for franchisees?